first we're going to introduce our team working with the family who will be our spokesman in days to come, Bishop Tavis Grant, uh, Director Push Excel here at Rainbow Push, and Attorney Jeanette Wilson, and Mr. Omar Sharif, members of our team. Uh, other family members are coming. Introduce yourself, Justin. Uh, Marcus Riley. Thompson. Davion. I'm Dennis Thompson, Davion's dad. There's some noise. Okay. Let go up, let go up my side. That's the family. Mm-hmm. Made it a chin chin chin, huh? <laughs> since this crisis came upon us a few weeks ago, we were meeting with the family, Mr. and Mrs. Mary, Justin, Lawl, and the family, Attorney Cannon Lambert. The act of removing a Naperville was a barbaric act of racism, both immoral and illegal. This act has been addressed by the family and, and the lawyers. We're going to be meeting with the President of Buffalo Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings, early next week, to discuss African Americans receiving an equal share of relationships. Equal treatment, he has equal franchises, 1,200 franchises, too few owned by African Americans, financial services, professional services, contracts and procurement. Now, the king could not stop merely with an apology for Rosa Parks being violated. He had to deal with the whole law, the legal infrastructure, without focusing on, on the driver's permission. We have to deal with the structure of Buffalo Wings and in our community. So I want to ask Justin to come and speak to the family now. We will be meeting with the president of Buffalo Wild Wings this coming Monday. To have my bigger relationship with the company, Justin. How's everybody doing today? All right. What was that? Uh, my name is Justin Ball. Oh, uh, my wife uh, is Mary Ball. She's the one that shared the post on Facebook. I um, also had two other children. Uh, that were there at the during the incident. Um, so that day we went to Buffalo Wild Wings uh, after our kids had basketball games and after a birthday party. And actually, uh, one of the kids uh, that was with us, it was his birthday, so you know it was a celebration. So we decided to go to Buffalo Wild Wings to uh, continue our celebration. Uh, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, I was the first one to walk in the door, uh, and I was greeted by a host. Uh, young African-American man, uh, and he asked us how many we had with our party. Uh, I told him that we had 15 with our party, uh, so he said, okay. And he walked over to the showroom, uh, began to set up for uh, our party. Uh, so I, uh, my wife, uh, Mary, is like, uh, we actually, we have 18, so I, I hurried and went over to the showroom where the host was setting up, and 
let them know we actually have 18 people uh, so he could get set up to accommodate us. Uh, at that time, I walked back to the front of the restaurant and uh, waited for him to come get us so that we could be seated. Uh, and as he come back to the front, uh, he looked at me and he asked me, he said, what race are you guys? Okay, so uh, I kind of looked at him because it was a surprising question. And I asked him, uh, why, do, why does that matter? And he's like, uh, he says, you know, we have a customer here who's a, who's a regular uh, who's racist and he doesn't want to sit around black people. And those were his exact words. And so I look back at him and uh, our, our focus at this point was uh, kids had been running around all day. So, you know, we want to get them to eat. So I really didn't think a, a ton of it. It was a little bit because I was surprised. I was a, um, a little bit perturbed by the question. Uh, but at that, that time, I didn't really understand um, what that young gentleman was trying to do. Uh, in hindsight, uh, that young gentleman, that young African-American gentleman, was actually trying to, to help us out and explain uh, the situation, um, that they had a customer who was a regular there, that he had been trained uh, by the management staff uh, to accommodate this gentleman. Um, so what he was doing is he was trying to kind of give us a heads up and let us know about the situation. So uh, we decide, our party comes in and we decide to sit down um, at the table. We had two tables. One, we, we, we uh, had an adult table uh, and then we had a, a table full of children, six, six adults, 12 children. Uh, so we take a, we take a seat, a uh, couple minutes go by uh, and then the manager comes from the back. His name is John. He comes to the back and he comes down to the end of the table where Marcus and I are sitting and he comes to the table and he says, excuse me, uh, we're going to have to move you. These tables are reserved. Okay. So, um, at that point, um, you know, we start talking to, to John, who's a, who's a manager there. Uh, and I'll, I'll pass it over to Marcus, uh, who can, f f who can further illustrate the story for us. Okay. Just <clears throat> kind of to piggyback off of what Justin said, John made it to the table and, um, his first thing that he said was, uh, unfortunately, these tables are reserved. Um, we have to move you. Um, so at that point, I just looked at John and I, and I, you know, we were already aware of what's going on. Um, I looked at him and I said, John, I, I'm aware of what's going on. Um, and, and no, I'm, I'm not moving um, due to the color of my skin. Um, once I said that, John was kind of taken back. Obviously, he, he kind of looked at me in the eyes and just was, uh, was shocked. Um, and then soon after, he, he shook his head and apologized and said he understands. Um, so once John does that, he, he leaves our table. Um, and then he goes, sits with the patrons that has these racist beliefs, pulls a chair and sits down at the table. Um, soon after, John is joined with, uh, by another uh, a manager of Buffalo Wild Wings. Her name was Hannah. Um, she was a white female. Um, we can only assume that Hannah and John were having a conversation to those patrons about us not wanting to move. Um, obviously, we only can assume because I wasn't at the table to, to confirm that. However, um, once that conversation concluded between those, those four, um, Hannah and John came back to our table. So I started talking to Hannah, just letting her know my displeasures of the conversation John and I had. Um, while I'm explaining to Hannah the conversation, um, John says to Ashley, I thought those tables were reserved. I wasn't sure if you guys had to move. Um, <clears throat> so then I, I shifted my focus from Hannah to John because John and I literally had the conversation of him telling us that the tables were reserved and him telling me that we had to move. Um, so I looked at John again and just said, listen, John, that's not the conversation you and I just had. You told me per beta that unfortunately these tables are reserved and we have to move. Once again, John gave a blank look. Um, Hannah's kind of unaware of, of what's going on. So she says, um, <clears throat> so at that point, I, I'm, Hannah and I are engaged in conversation. I'm just letting her know, obviously, the conversation that John and I had. Um, Hannah begins to tell me that um, 
you know what, it's, it's all hearsay and gossip. Um, our employees don't necessarily know um, about these people. But everybody on, the, everybody on the staff that night was aware of this, this couple and aware of their beliefs, but Hannah and John. So um, it struck me um, the wrong way that everybody in the building, staff, hosts, cooks, bartenders, knew that this couple was racist. So I have the two superior managers in the building telling me that they don't know about this couple a regular couple that's, that visits their establishment on a regular basis. They don't know their beliefs. Um, <clears throat> at that point, I realized John and Hannah both lacked integrity. Both were being dishonest. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, I think that was an effort to accommodate this couple. At that point, <clears throat> we had to make a decision. Hannah was doing everything in her power to keep us there offered 25% off, offered free advertisers and drinks that we had already sent back. Um, but we were just in, we were already in disbelief that not only were we asked to, to move or told that we had to move, but then these two people, these two senior managers at Buffalo Wild Wings sat with this couple and had conversations around this couple, then reconvened with us to have a conversation that wasn't honest, that wasn't pure, that lacked integrity about this couple so at that point, we decided that we weren't appreciated. We just decided to go. Um, <clears throat> as we were walking out, well, you know what, let me back page. So we told Hannah, give us five minutes, let us decide what we wanted to do. Hannah and John walks away. As a group, we decided that we're not spending any money here, right? We're not appreciated, so we get up and go. As we're walking out, these boys that's behind me are asking, coach, what do we do? Coach, are we getting kicked out? Coach, why does this couple don't, why don't they like us? And I'm having to answer these questions on the way out the door. <clears throat> also, um, Ashley, as we're walking out, she can give you a good story about what patrons did, other patrons, not this couple, um, how they were giving her hugs and how employees were saddened, how some employees were crying, um, <clears throat> employees embarrassed, to be wearing a Buffalo Wild Wings uniform that day. Um, patrons willing to give her hugs on the way out. Um, the same host that asked Justin what his race was, and we really appreciate that because without that host, none of this happens. We're unaware. That same host as we're walking out the door is in tears. Young African-American man in tears. Went against his company policy stopped asking and said, you know what, I want you to have this. He went to the back room, took a picture of the board with all the senior managers' numbers, phone numbers on it, human resources, district managers, so forth. He screenshotted that and, and gave it to Ashley. <clears throat> Once we leave, we get in the car. I get in the car with about six boys. And now I'm faced with questions of, you know, why are we leaving? What's the circumstance? What do we do? Why don't they like us? And I coach all these kids, so it, it was troubling to, to answer, the, answer the, those questions because obviously, obviously you see kids here from as young as five to as old as 12. So <clears throat> getting them to understand something of that magnitude of why, we, why we're not appreciated, why we were disrespected, why we were embarrassed is, is tough for them to not only just hear but to understand. Um, <clears throat> and I coach these kids three or four times out the week. Um, and, and getting a message across to them has never been a problem until that day. And I don't know if I did a, a, a good job of, of, of making them understand, but I did the best I could. I mean, who could explain racism to five years old, five year olds and, and 12 year olds and make them understand? Um, <clears throat> Buffalo Wild Wings put not only myself in a bad position that night, but they put this whole entire family in a tough position. Now we got kids waking up in the morning trying to figure out who they are or if they're accepted when they step out the door. We got kids walking into restaurants that have a different vision for the rest of their lives. We got kids going to school that's predominantly white that don't really understand if they're wanted. We have to answer those questions every day, day in and day out. It happened October 26th, but it still lives amongst us, amongst us now. We still have to deal with this. We still have these conversations every day with these children. So <clears throat> once we left, we made a phone call to the district manager. I talked to him that night. And I kind of explained what was going on. And um, 
this is how we, how we essentially got here. Um, Mary made the post, and now we stand before you guys. Let me indicate to you who are here today uh, there's a prevailing mood in our country today. Make America as it once was. Rapid racial barbaric, racial segregation. I was a restaurant trying to use a public library in Greenville, South Carolina. Couldn't attend Clemson College and University. Here we are today, on the one hand, in Kansas City, they remove a Martin Luther King sign from the street. Babies in cages on the borders. It's a, it's a mood. I want to congratulate the family for having the discipline, be nonviolent and legal, and patient. We talked yesterday with the president of the, of the Buffalo Wild Wayne, Mr. Tick. He, he was going to come here Monday to meet with the family, but we're going to meet with him first. And it's not only that the family get the proper apologies that they deserve, and more than that, not only equal treatment is at stake, but equal access to franchises and construction and banking. Professor said, we cannot send be customers, we must be partners in the process. But the fact that the courage to set, set forward in Q&A and in our me media. Yes, sir. So, so, so yes, the, the, the host did tell us, he made us aware, and, and I want to be clear that the host um, was in a position that he felt like he was trying to look out for us in a way that, you know, just to let us know what type of situation that we were walking into. Um, so I think it was more of a heads up type of thing versus a, you know, we don't want you here type of deal. Um, but yes, we did make the decision ultimately to go ahead and sit down anyway. Uh, on the way out, we did. Um, we were walking out, and he was just kind of staring at us. But that was that was it. We. This is a good question. Uh, we didn't really interact with him, but uh, to go back with the host um, again, we we feel like he was trying to give us a heads up, and we feel like he was in a very uh, tough position, um, and that he was trained uh, to to do something like that and ask that, necessarily ask that question. Uh, Cause we also don't feel, we, we don't feel like that's the first time that happened. Uh, we feel like that's been a common theme there and that they've accommodated that, that customer before. And we really have to thank that customer or that, not that customer, but, but that host. Because if he would have never said anything to that, to us about what was going on and gave us a heads up, we would have sat down at those tables. The manager would have came over and he would have asked us to move uh, not because the tables were reserved, because keep this in mind as well, we've ate at Buffalo Wings many a times and we try to call ahead and we try to make reservations and they don't, they don't do reservations. They don't, they don't reserve tables. And so we would have just moved not knowing why we were moving. Okay? And, and that guy was so, that customer uh, was so comfortable there uh, that he, he sat there and enjoyed his meal. He went out, we watched him go out for a smoke and uh, walk back by us and just and just stare at us, try to intimidate us, uh, and, and he was still there uh, when we left, and, and was was very comfortable. So so, my assumption is that he was he was very comfortable, and that that wasn't the first time that, that happened. These children have had the, the Rosa Parks experience. They don't, they don't know about this the rest of their lives. But this is a sign of our times. It's removing. King signed in Kansas City, equating the Nazis with freedom walkers in Virginia, babies in the borders in Texas. We're, we're better than this. We're not going to give up. The family long term lament, we're going to deal with this incident with, the, with this family. But we're, we're not going to stop. We're going to meet with the president of the company on this coming Monday, right, Bishop Grant? That's right. Talk about it. 
I want to commend the family for their boldness and their courage. Uh, we will be meeting Bishop Tavis Grant, T-A-V-I-S-G-R-A-N-T. We will be uh, meeting with uh, the heads of Buffalo Wild Wings as a national field director and, and uh, one of the leaders of this team. As Reverend Jackson just indicated, these children will forever have this in their memory. My father was a student at Tennessee State University and a Vietnam vet. And for me, this is personal because my father marched with Dr. King and was met with racism at a Woolworths lunch counter. And a white patron said to them, if you allow us to put cigarettes out on your back, we'll let you sit and eat. And my father chose to go to jail with Dr. King. This is not our best. And the structural and systematic nature of racism, currently we're in Chicago where hate crimes are at an unprecedented high rate. From the defaming of Emmett Till markers to pulling down Dr. King's signs to a family being denied access to a family time at a sports bar. Imagine that. And so we want a, more than an apology because that, that, that wouldn't have been sufficient for Dr. King as it relates to Rosa Parks getting an apology from the bus company. We need systematic, constructive change that roots out, uproots racism at its very core and affords these children at best an opportunity to seize America is not just for some people, it's for everybody. Questions? Sorry. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings has 1,200 franchises. Two true African American owned. They engage in financial services, professional services, contracts, and procurement. And one of the partners are not just customers. It's bad experience giving us the opportunity to protest and fight back. I want to again thank the family for having the discipline. Fight back non violent and legal. We will stand with the family. If we don't resolve it, there'll be a national boycott. I hope it's resolved. 